So I'm here in my backyard uh, asking the most basic plant biology question, which is what is a plant? How do, do we distinguish, distinguish plants from other organisms on the earth? And there are five general characteristics that we use to distinguish the five major kingdoms um, in biology. Uh, the first is plants are eukaryotic, which means their cells are more complex than bacteria or microorganisms. Um, and plant cells are at least 10 times larger than the prokaryotic or bacterial microorganism cells. You can imagine a bacteria is this, this size, and a plant cell is gonna be more like that, a lot, lot bigger. And with that increase in size, that increase in volume on the inside of the cell, plants can package things into their cells. Uh, and the def definition of a eukaryotic cell is a more complex cell in which there is DNA packaged into chromosomes. And then there are these structures, these, these structures inside called organelle. Uh, and they're like organs in our body. They perform certain functions that allow these cells to, to be very, very successful. Uh, so plants are eukaryotic, which means they have a plasma membrane around the outside. The other thing they have are cell walls made out of cellulose. On the outside of the plasma membrane is going to be this net-like structure called the cell wall. Uh, and uh, a good example of cell wall is my cotton t-shirt. So cotton is, is, is cellulose. Uh, and so this t-shirt is 100% cellulose right here. So you can get the sense of the consistency and the properties of a cell wall. It's stretchy, but at some point you pull it and resist expansion. And the cell wall allows uh, plant cells to take up water uh, without bursting and, and has other really important functions as well. Plants are also, this is really an important one, Plants are autotrophic. Trophic means metabolism. How are they getting their energy and forming their cellular structures? And what plants do is they capture sunlight, the energy from sunlight, and do photosynthesis. And it's because inside their eukaryotic cells, they have these organelles that we call chloroplasts that with chlorophyll that can cap capture the energy of the sunlight and turn that energy into energy-rich sugars that then all of life is formed from and energized by. If we didn't have autotrophic plants, life on Earth would not exist in the way that we know it. The fourth characteristic is, is the reproductive mode, how plants reproduce. And there are two ways in which organisms reproduce. One is sexual reproduction and the other is asexual reproduction. And plants do both. So they reproduce sexually. You can see these beautiful flowers here, these cone flowers here. That is sexual reproduction in which plants are getting uh, pollinators, bees, to carry pollen with sperm cells to female flower parts so that egg and sperm can come together. So the genetic information of two adult individuals, two parents, are coming together in combination to form offspring that are genetically similar but variable from parents. Uh, the other form of uh, is, is asexual reproduction in which plants uh, can clone themselves. And there are cacti called choya cactus where the, the tips of the branch will just pop off and form a new plant. All right, and we use this in the greenhouse industry. We take cuttings or, or root segments and we'll just replant them. And it's genetically the same plant material. We're just taking them off, planting them somewhere else. My favorite uh, asexual reproducing plant is quaking aspen. I got quaking aspen trees in my yard. They're hard to see from right here, mm -hmm. but they do what's called root sucker and they send out roots and then the roots will just sucker up and send up a new aspen tree and it's genetically identical to the parent plants. So let's look at something closer. My blackberries. So you see right here, I planted my blackberries right over there. And I just want to show you they're sexually reproducing beautifully. I picked a gallon of blackberries this morning. Here they are. Mm, so good. These are really good. So that's the other flowers here. You can see the flowers that are turning into fruits. This is sexual reproduction in action. Bees are always buzzing around here when there are flowers, carrying that pollen with the sperm. So right here, we've got a little blackberry plant where the blackberry roots have run into the strawberries and it is popping up asexually.
So this is genetically identical to this plant over here. Another really good example of asexual reproduction are these strawberries. They have little roll, uh, runners right here. You can see one, it's called a stolen. And it's running along right here and it's now getting ready. What it will do is throw down new roots and it will make a new strawberry plant right here. So the spread of this strawberry patch has largely been driven by asexual reproduction from these, these runners that are running along. We planted a few right in here and they're just spreading out through asexual reproduction. And then the last thing that's important to understand about what makes a plant a plant is the way that they grow. I almost just tripped. <laughs> uh, the plants, unlike animals, their growth is indeterminate. So no matter what happened to me, my genetics are predetermined. I am going to be, I was going to be six feet tall. My wingspan is fixed, but plants can grow in an indeterminate way. Their, their growth uh, is based on factors in the environment. They can grow towards light. They can grow towards soil resources. Uh, so it'd be like my arm being able to grow longer or being able to grow taller, right? Or my feet expanding. That's called, uh, when, when growth is predetermined and fixed, that's called determinate growth. And when plant, gr uh, when growth um, is not constrained and variable, we call that indeterminate growth. Okay.